it's supposed to be. A lovely family. A lovely family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's cool. I mean, is it is it uh, harmonious between? Does it start with the husband and yourself? Uh huh. Yeah. And then the kids. They got to filter down from there. Yeah. Oh, that's Stephen. If he uh, he might have to reboot and come in, go all the way back out, and then come back in. Had somebody had to do that. You can hear us. Go all the way back out. Reboot your computer and get back on. Because <laughs> I th am I showing up that I have plenty of internet connection, Roxanne? Yeah. You, yeah. Just fine. I'm I'm fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah, he's the one that spends you know last seven years putting this program together, and it's about really. It's, it, it has a lot to do with the inner connections of inside. It's an inside job. So if the happiness begins like with you and your husband, that becomes more of an inside job between the two of you, how to create that outer happiness. And uh, wow, what a, what a gift that you guys have. I mean, really cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. So I answered it correctly. <laughs> you know, I already have. I already have happiness. <laughs> you already have happiness. But a lot of times we weren't taught that in school. Mm -mm. You know? Actually, of... high school sweethearts. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Wow, how sweet that is. Yeah, the relationship that I was in was over 20 years ago, too. So uh, 30 years ago. And But in between that, I had a, I was in other relationships. But you can go back to finding that peace back then that you did have that you can relate it to right now. Mm -hmm. it's, it is nice. It's a good place to be actually. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you jumping on and, and helping. Me out here. I really do. You're welcome. So what are your blabs about? Uh, well, health. Ah, what kind of, what's in the health? What kind of health? Well, I, well, no, um, I have a community. It came over from Google Plus, and I still keep up with my community. I want them to come over here and start one, talking to everybody, uh, learn about epilepsy, which I have. Oh, you have epilepsy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. I only stare for 30 seconds. Wow, I wouldn't know it until you told me. And now I'm for it. now I'm listening for it. It's weird. Isn't that funny how people are? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you're yeah, not. You, mm -hmm. yeah, you wouldn't know it, but I talk about it so everybody will learn how many different ones there are. Oh wow, incredible. Mm -hmm. and, and what's what what is your type? Uh just uh, thirty seconds. Sometimes I'll shake my hand. I tell people not to talk to me because if they do, I'll try to answer you. And sometimes I drool because of that. So um, wow. they, they started when I was 21. And they mm -hmm. said it's because of a high fever when I was a baby. So I have scar okay. tissue on the left side of my brain. And that's called epilepsy. Mm -hmm. Left mm -hmm. mesial temporal sclerosis. <laughs> <laughs> That's what causes it. Ah, okay. Well, I didn't know that, but now I do. So, yeah, thank you for that. Yeah. So, uh, and you've had it since twenty-one. So cool. It's quite a. It's been a journey for you then. Yeah, I've I've worked up until four years ago. Did ultrasound. Mm -hmm. So. That's been good. Now I don't drive. Uh, you don't drive? Now my, now, yeah, no. Um, uh, they're sporadic now having them, so I don't drive because I mm -hmm. don't have one while I'm driving. <laughs> yeah. can, a lot can happen in 30 seconds. Yeah. 
Yeah, at 60 miles, if you could do 60 miles an hour in one mile, so you could go a half a mile and not even know you could did it. Yeah. Wow, if you were driving 60 miles an hour down the road. So yeah, I could see that, yeah. Wow, mm -hmm. what a trip that must be for you. Are, are, you, is, are you able to heal that part of you? It used to be hard. When What's that? I, it used to be hard, but now um, I think about not wanting to kill anybody. <laughs> and um, to how worse my seizures can be. So that's the only thing wrong with me is not being able to drive. Wow. If that makes sense. You know, that's the only well, bad part of me is not being able to drive because I don't drop to the floor and shake. And some other people, if they have them longer like that, some kids, they're, they lose the ability to talk or walk. If they have some people have them 300 a month. So, oh. they, have you found any? Hmm? Do you so, uh, do you medicate for it? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm on. Yeah, and uh, I also have. I'll, I'll lose my voice here in a second because I have what's called a vagal nerve stimulator and it has a wire by my vocal cords that sends it up to the scar. Here it goes. And uh, it'll help send the pulse out every five minutes to help calm them down. Wow. So my husband likes that. He just wished they would turn it up so I'll lose my voice for a while. <laughs> No, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, he jokes about it too. Oh, bless his heart. <laughs> and yours. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, that is something else. Wow. Mm -hmm. Tell my dog to stop barking. <laughs> <laughs> So the kind of group that comes over, so you talk about epilepsy, just now, is it all of, uh, it, it all walks that come over or they just want, or what you're teaching? Um, we talk about, some people have it rough because their family, they don't get along. Um, not that they don't get along, they just don't understand how to accept them. Mm -hmm. They have it rough. Um, some people can't afford the medicine because it can be real expensive. So they get down about that. And some of the parents come on to talk and just need to be lifted up. And that's what I try to do because I've come to grips with mine. What did he do to get the bark collar got it? So that's what I do. I just, I, I've. I've come to grips, so I just try to make, I say, um, you talk about your cup, you can be either be half empty or half full. I just say, mine runneth over because I've, I'm fine with it. <laughs> <laughs> we, all think we, have, we all think we have problems, but you know what? You're better than, I'm better than someone else, you know? Mm -hmm. Somebody else is worse off than you are. We get, we get to recognize that. So I'm really honored that you came out. Well, you're welcome. I hate uh, I hate your other, your friend couldn't come on. I know. I've been hoping that he would just jump back on here, but um, he hasn't jumped back on. Uh, must be some kind of, if we tried it out earlier today, like at one o'clock he was on, we were talking, we had no no issue whatsoever and then um so we're in a place where this is a another 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 i don't know if you would i want to say it's a glitch because ah glitch. here he comes he's starting to come on. Okay. <laughs> he's, he's coming on <laughs> oh, good. okay it really is good and uh uh, hopefully he got to a computer. <laughs> well, I try to write. I write about everything. If you ever want to look up, I can type it. 
because there's also some other people who have it. I say, um, I read about one that says, um, I wish my seizures were as good as yours. <laughs> because yes. um, he, uh, he writes music after he comes out of his. Wow. Yeah. And he wrote an opera. <laughs> Does it almost, is it like, does it turn your brain off for that 30 seconds? No, no, uh -uh. I just don't remember anything during it. Wow, that could actually be the one gift of a meditation that you never had before. Yeah, I guess. But um, yeah, he comes out and can write music. So it, it's just one, one guy comes out and... Uh, well, he he has them because he lost and he lost his sight, but he can paint now because he can tell the texture of the paint with his fingers. So he sells his artwork. Oh my gosh! What a whoa! Mm -hmm. That's a gift. That's really a gift because that thirty seconds that you say you don't even remember it happens to you is. What we always, what most people try to do in meditation, try to achieve. <laughs> really? I, I never thought of that. Finding, what's that? I never thought of that. It's true, though. I mean, when we try to meditate, what do we try to do? We try to get all of our thoughts out of our mind. Well, your stay, your stance is what at thirty seconds it comes up every once in a while, and when I come out of it. I can write a book. Like you were mentioned, this you can write. What was he saying? You can he can write. You got your mind is clear because you've had this um, situation that just allowed you to completely free yourself from all your thoughts that you had previously up to that point. Uh huh. Yeah. I never thought I would write. <laughs> you never thought you would write. Do you write now? Yeah, I write little blogs. Oh wow. Wow. Very, very, very cool. Yeah. <laughs> Still can't come in. Wow. It's really special, you know, that you told me that story. Well, good. No, I think it's really wise. Uh, I, I mean, I can almost see it as being a huge gift. Oh, wow. Thank you. <laughs> I do. I, I mean... Not that I'm not asking for it to be in there, but I'm saying I can feel it being, if I can bl black out, I mean, not black out, like, but just get that 30 seconds of relief. I used to do that in um, yoga. Mm -hmm. for, I practiced yoga for seven years. So in between the asanas, I'd only have maybe a second or two that I could get to know that I don't remember anything. So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <a good> trip. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Well. Well, thank you for stopping by. Um, hopefully, we get um, to somebody bit. else to drop in. Yeah. Um, let's see. Someone Anybody else is else? here. Uh, Steve Hannon. Well, thank you. Bye bye. There you go. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't get to meet. Oh, <laughs> Stephen. <laughs> bye. Oh my God, Stephen, you're on the air. <laughs> oh my gosh. What is up with that, Stephen? Wow, everybody. Well, we're here. just jump on. Anyone else? Just jump on here and. Uh, all right, we got another Stephen. Woohoo! I think we. There we go. <laughs> we gotta have an Australian guy from the Outback. I are you my favorite comedian of the day? I am the subs I am the substitute Stephen spelled with a PH. 
Okay. So describe to me. <laughs> what <laughs> okay. That was my best material, and all I got was okay. We got to bring Stephen in here. No, I, I want to hear yours. <laughs> I think you could. I think you could top him. No. Oh no no no. He he actually is grounded in what he says. I make it up as I go along. <laughs> You know, the last time I was with you, or that you don't say, by the way, I learned that at Better Homes and Gardens. You never say, may I see the last issue of Better Homes and Gardens is not in my lifetime. We're not going to have the last issue. <laughs> so, uh, but the previous, prior time, Steve was pulling his same woo, woo, woo. You know, he's, is he going to get here? And then 30 minutes later, you're off the air, you know, so, no. <laughs> But uh, I, I'm kidding aside, I have honeydews. I've got uh, pots and pans to dry. I've got the, I've got them washed to my standards, not to my wife's standards. Oh, your wife has a different standard than you. Uh, yeah, to say the least, you always marry or hire people smarter than you are. She she was a, she was accepted to Princeton, couldn't go because her parents didn't have money for her to live off campus because at the time. Princeton wanted women, but not on campus. And she met you. No, oh, no, no, no. That's what you know. That was that, that was some of the iterations later. Iteration. But the point is, here's Princeton saying, come on, come on, come on, come to school, but live off campus. And Princeton's got to be one of the most expensive places to live. She didn't have a car. <laughs> so she says to me, what if I did go to Princeton? We've never met. I said, uh, at the risk of being self-effacing, uh, there's no choice here. You go to Princeton and your life goes on without me because I didn't know her at the time anyhow. You know, so yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it didn't matter. I'm really worried about Stephen not being able to come on because he was unable to come on before. And I, I'm sure you are great on book learning. I, I do read books, but I don't say that I'm a book learner. I get the feeling of the impression, maybe wrong, but I don't think so, that Stephen, the number one Stephen, I'm like, like four in line, but we spell their names correctly. Correct. Uh, he's got a bookcase behind him. That counts for something, right? He does. He's got a bookcase, and that, that, that exudes intelligence. Yes. Um, Good word. Good. Exuding is very important, I think, in life. Don't you? I think so. I think that, yeah. that it, the part of that being exude, you know, um, I'm not sure what kind of a computer he has right now. I think we're going to get clear yeah. and, uh, on that because that's our connection to the world. <laughs> I, I sense you're a little lost without him, if I may be so bold. Well, I, I guess... Thank you for being that way. You know what? I don't have to be. I, I, I can, uh, I, 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 you're right. I'm not, I'm tend to let, let my voice be heard. And uh, I get it's to. It's a good voice too. And it's a good brain. So, the, you know, the brain and the voice are connected in your case. We don't get that very much. I mean, on a percent basis, the number of blabs, and I'm not being your feet liberal, Eastern bedwetting, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. But. I'm very selective because I know I know it's a challenge to produce and and well deliver, if you will, a blab that that has attention. Not to mention <clears throat> developing a headline. I mean, I'm really going to school on this headline routine because it makes sense. The headlines that I see are indecipherable. They've got hashtags. They've got reframuses. They've got clavicles and. When I get through, I say, I have no idea. Maybe that was their purpose of what's going to happen. Guess what? I don't go there. You don't go there. Doesn't All right, here's a great happiness period. <laughs> yeah. What we never taught, meaning we're losing a T there, right. in school. It's short, sweet, pithy, P-I-T-H-Y, and to the point. And it grabs you. <laughs> I think a headline is, is crucial. I it think is. lighting is crucial. And then we have now an audio Nazi who says, if you don't have good audio, you don't go on his blab, which I think is cute. I mean, that's a good shtick, you know? Yeah. And, and so I'm, I'm more of a lighting Nazi. I've got, I don't like the word Nazi. So a lighting Nazi. 
<laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Nuthead. Let's say nutsy. And poor Steve, I mean, he flunks both video and audio today. Unfortunately, it's not his fault. I mean, is he still doing dial-up? What's the deal, do you think? I don't know. I think he graduated from dial-up. <laughs> Maybe he thinks this is AOL with pictures. What do we know? Well, you know what? I'll try to interpret what he was going to say today. Now, All right. <laughs> you know, and, and that, you know, part of the things was what we were taught in school is really our, our feelings and emotions, our thoughts and our emotions together produce results. So we can choose to have higher thoughts and more positive thoughts versus it's easy to slide down the slide and be into that negative pit all the time. Oh, it may I tack on to that. That may fit in with your thinking. If it doesn't, I'll know. I'll learn because you're, this is the area. This blab is the home of candor. Thank you. And the, the thing I would attach into that is that too many people on this planet, in my, in my opinion, and I've been on the planet a little longer than most folks, <laughs> uh, hello, is that people think that the content of small talk is complaining. The content of small talk is complaining. Where, where do we, where, where, how do we attract people and say, I'm going to give you one half hour of major league complaining about driving, the weather, uh, a boil on my butt. I mean, you know, have you seen my scars lately? And, and we all slip into that. We really do. I mean, I have a marvelous uh, physical therapist. Her name is Crystal. I think I've talked to you about it before with a capital K. Uh -huh. she, and she recently lost her mother. and She's handled that beautifully. But she has certain things she hates. And I say, try to say you dislike. Because hate upsets you more than the person being or the thing being hated. Right. Correct. His work gets right. You're you're you you are tuned in. Is it's very true because when we're connected to the word hate, we attract more of hate. Uh, I to me, if I got nothing else out of this blab and be able to express that and communicate and exchange that and and link up on that, if you will, <clears throat> is is crucial <clears throat> because think of the people that you run into, and you know how often do we say. If you are especially coming out of a pit of a morass, I love that word, a crevasse of hate and of, of feeling sorry for yourself and being frankly on the verge of cowardice. Hmm. And you know what, what cowardice is. Sure. And we, I met a guy who avoided cowardice by the skin of his tongue when he was, if, if I have no reason to believe it's not a true story, but he was a former quadriplegic. Oh, wow. And he bit his tongue to bleed and choke himself to death. And then he asked for help because he thought of his, his little sister and said, I can't leave her on the planet without me and so on and so forth. <clears throat> and he recovered. <laughs> well, well, he's 24 Steve years said. old, you know, now. Oh. Stephen says the outside world is an image of our inside world. I've heard him say that. Yeah. I, re I remember him saying that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and in, it's, it's powerful. Yeah, and you were saying about laugh. We never taught to laugh, okay, <clears throat> which is infectious. We never did. We, right? Uh, were you taught to laugh? No, especially, I wasn't even taught to applaud properly, and I know how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Our hearts and, are met, see? And, and, and laughing, does all sorts of great things to the body. I don't, I'm not a physician, so I can't say what it is, but you, if you got a physician in a rare moment of, moment of candor and they had nothing else to do exactly. for, for free, they would tell you the endorphins, whatever. And you guys are infectious together. I mean, separate, dandy, you know, it's okay too. But when you two guys get together, people go say, this is like a double, a triple ice cream cone. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if I'm allowed to have it. Yes, it is. We You've got to have permission to laugh in this world. We weren't. 
We weren't. We were those, some of the missing skills in school probably are so simple if we would really think about how we weren't taught to laugh. We weren't taught, we were pointed at and we needed to study for 10 hours a day. You know, I mean, what? We, did we actually learn something? It's a different type of learning. So absolutely, hear, hear you on that. We could run a campaign with it. it be, uh, uh, hey, yes. Seth. Uh oh, uh oh. It looks yeah, like we're. We may have offended somebody, and they're coming in to straighten us out. I'm just kidding, Shelton. I'd follow you, and you're a great guy. Go ahead, please. Uh, uh, Stephen, I don't, I, I, and Robert, I don't mean to laugh, Jackie, but I have a very specific question. Uh, Stephen, you are, you have a, a background in radio, right? I do. I admit that I was a suit, but I did do very little on the air, fortunately for our ratings. Okay, I I am trying to uh, be the producer of a lab show. And I need some help. I need some advice. How do how do I get uh, talent on the? How do I get talent to interview? How, what's the best way to to wrangle some talent? Okay, let's. I'm not backing up because I'd be delighted, because I've had some success as a suit as being a producer, and there are a number of people still on the air today, 20 and 30 years later, who are number one in their time slot. Did I get help? <clears throat> You're doing the right thing. I got help. I don't know. I don't know how to pick out who's going to be a winner and a loser. But if you get around people of, it's like the Chinese proverb: talk to people who've been down that road, down that path, give the experience. I'll say it for the public, because I get to choose who to accept on Skype and who isn't. Skype is very good way for us to one-on-one -on -one, uh, talk about these things. I'm, I'm not opposed to setting up a blab, but I would really like to develop a, a, a bit of an agenda to address what you're talking about because I'm very excited about your, what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you know. Well, go ahead, Robert. Sheldon, what kind of talent are you looking for? <laughs> well, I'm looking for, uh, given the, the, how small uh, blab is right now, I'm, what I want is I want like Z-list celebrities and then leverage that to bigger celebrities. Okay. So I want, I want you know, like reality TV stars and stuff like that. People that aren't that are just barely famous, and uh, I'm not going to be on air talent. I'm going to be the producer. Elise, I don't know if you know who Elise is, but Elise is like the most famous blabber on Blab right now. She's a former radio show talk show, uh, former radio morning zoo person in the New York City area, uh, who is uh, who is What's, Elise? Elise. What's his last name? Her, I, I don't know what her last name is. Oh, her, oh. Her, her, her username is Elise is Curious, but she is, oh, she is. I, I missed her. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not an educated, but the, the end product. I always try to start with the end in mind. You know, everybody talks about that, but, but it is, it is pretty important because you can't. We're not capable of vision envisioning what we, what we hope will happen if we get like blab is it, you know, is that have multiple uh, outlets for the content. Repurposing is important. I've trained, I was trained some years ago about repurposing. There are, at that time, and that was, I'd say six years ago, there, we identified 250 ways to repurpose intellectual property. And if you have that in mind, you may have uh, branches, if you will. You may have a particular one for budding stars. You ha may have a particular one for people who want to do what you're talking about, you know, that you can train it. Uh, if you would like to connect one day on Skype, one-on-one, -on -one, my <laughs> handle on Skype is my name with periods between uh, the first name and the middle initial and a period between the middle initial and the last name. And it's Stephen with a PH because on this blab, you must spell your name with a ph <laughs> dot <laughs> dot q dot shannon s h a n n o n and they they've bought and sold and i think microsoft i know microsoft now owns it and i did a a full hour with my my son from los angeles who by the way is stuck in the 70s music and is a manuscript editor and a sculptor. How about those things working together? Uh, plus, he does radio work on his own as well. 
in that way, we can have a little bit of an agenda and go from point A to point B. And you bring bring along some other people. I, I won't be able to do that, but uh, Skype allows, you know, more than one person. Then we can focus on that. And the blab, doing a blab with it is fine, but if uh, you're like I am, once you get on a blab, like our topic is happiness, what we never taught in, what we were never taught in school, we're, we're not on that subject right now, and out of fairness to the blab yeah, host. I, don't, I didn't mean to blab, Jackie, but I, I no, no, but no. I, I didn't. Blab, I, I love the word. I love, you know, that's, that that is. So what's your blab? Oh, what's, well, I have five blabs right now. <laughs> <laughs> not that he's a, not that he's you a. You every right? one of them? No, well, yeah, I'm. I, me personally, I run five blabs, but that when I say run, I'm. It's very informal. It's just I, I just show up and do it. It's not like it's like actually anything of worth. Nothing. It's not. It's, uh, it's, it's, yeah, it totally is. You're jumping all yeah. around here. You're get. You're gaining yeah. a good audience. If well, I guess what I'm saying is, when it comes if it to wasn't the, worthwhile, you wouldn't do it. When it when it comes to the Elise show. I'm take I'm make, taking it much more serious in that it's more like a radio show or a TV show. Right, and then I'm the, <laughs> I, oh yeah, I'm the producer <laughs> and Elise, and Elise is the the on air talent. So I'm yeah. And, and Elise has already said you know it's your it's your responsibility to wrangle talent. So I need some advice as to how to do that. That's why I, that's why I blabjacked you because I I knew that Stephen. Okay. All right. The, here's the good news, is that let's take the example and, and it happened on Saturday. I introduced somebody uh, who, who's got a great story to a fellow by the name of Seth Godin, G-O-D-I-N. I recommend, if, you, if you're not aware of Seth, he would, he, he, deep down, he loves to be interviewed, whether it's just one person, just the other person talking to him and nobody else is hearing him. And he's, he's done um, a presentation many years ago that set the tone for bulletless um, presentations you know powerpoint without bullets can you imagine that yes and it's called sliced bread if he isn't a, and he has a, a blog posting every day you mean every day you mean saturdays and sundays and holidays i say every day 365 days his content may be one sentence or 500 words he would be he'd be a, a terrific person for just for openers and that leads to other persons is daniel paint what do you what do you know about daniel paint he loves random doing random uh blogs he hasn't been on uh lab to my knowledge and he's written a lot of books he's a stand-up guy he's got a tv show and uh daniel paint would be yeah. a terrific fun and those people are likely suspects and they all know each other if if you don't know Seth Godin, I'm not putting you down for that. But 90% of the time, if you're in social media, you know that Seth Godin. I, is he, is he, does, he, does he have a bald head? Does he have a bald head? Absolutely. You got it right. Okay. And he knows everybody because everybody knows him. When I started following him in the early 90s with a big T, that was before it was fashionable. Now the guy's published an awful lot of books, including this one. And I bought, I guess, about 10 of them and agreed to give them away because that's the part of the, pro, uh, part of the program with this. This is the first nonfiction illustrated book, according to Seth. And there's, there's a lot of good illustrations. I just don't happen to be getting to it right now. There we go. And this, the, the idea of this book especially the great story about this woman's picture here on the front and how she got it put in jail because she asked why women weren't getting the vote. She went to jail rather than to shut up. I mean, that's just, that just starts it. Look at that on the back. I mean, this is a very unusual book and it's his latest book. I've lost track of how many books he's published and he publishes every book in a different way. So I don't want to drag on about Seth, but there's, a gateway, if you will, to finding people, because if 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 you got somebody on the air, this this, this host, and I apologize, I'm not aware of her, but no, yeah, I, I, it, so. it's it's a big deal. It's just uh, she she has proven to me that yeah, the because I'm I'm a pretty good interviewer. I've proved she's proven to me that she's a damn good interviewer, and she's got right. a, she's a great has a great personality, 
Uh, okay. And I Has she written a book? Has she done blogs? We need to elevate her so that Seth Godin will say, yeah, I'd love to be interviewed she, by her because uh, I hear good things about her. She's a retired uh, radio show host, so, I mean, that that's... That's okay. We're all retired to a certain extent. You know, we don't work full time, so that part is retired. Yeah. A lot of people think I'm retired. Well, past 24 years, if I was retired, I'll, I'll keep it going. I loved it. You know, I worked with more than 4,000 people in those 24 years, one on one. So my thought is she already has some connections, to say the least. Yeah, she won't use them, though. She wants to prove no, them. No, 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 no. Here's how I would recommend it. So here's my point, is that we get the people who know her and adore her to, at the very least, write a recommendation about her. Yeah, because that's, yeah. we don't want to have to explain her to people that who's, for whom and with whom she's going to be interviewed. Yeah, that, that's. I'm trying to get to that point with her because I I am taking it seriously and I I think that we have a shot at doing something really unique and special. Uh, and there are going to be people that will be like, well, who is this person? Why should I get interviewed by them? And uh, I'm like, Elise, I know we I need some help. We can't just like I is if I'm going to be your producer, well, I need some help. I'll just name their call letters. I'll tell you right now whether she's believable. I, she, just I, don't, I don't. No, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't have you call her. Have you Googled her? Yeah, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't Googled her yet, but you I, have not. Okay, well, I recommend that strongly. Yes, she, she, oh, Google yeah. me. Go, okay. Google me. I mean, if there's there's no other cue, Stephen Q. Shannon on Google, except for my dear deceased dad, and you'll learn about me whether you want to deal with me any further. You know, I've written 80 articles on career matters, which relates to the world, because everything we do is related to career, the stomach, the pocketbook, and the heart. It's all related. Those three things. If you have missing those three things in doing a program, you don't have to I'll get all three. But if you if you think about the heart, the stomach, and the pocketbook, you'll have a successful event. All right. I'm supposed to not be on Blab, but I had to ask you that specific question because I saw you and I was like, I have to ask. I have okay. to get some homework. I will look so at you, did your, you did your homework. You know, in some I quarters in some quarters, people would think that's a big deal to know Steve Shannon. I don't agree with that. But I, <laughs> uh, my, job, my job was to put people on the air who you would know in that particular market and went on to get awards from the National Association okay. of Broadcasters and other things. So it is, it's not as, here, put it this way, it is not a mountain to climb. If you've got somebody that knows how to interview and you can display their talents, whether it's to one people, 10 people, a thousand or whatever, they'll be there. Okay, thank you for your time. I, I'm supposed to not be on Blab at all till midnight, but I'm I, I have to I had to ask you that question. So it, so it, um when when do you think a good time to to talk about uh, wrangling talent would be? Can you, okay, go ahead. Can you message me or can you give jump? Uh, how about later on tonight around six seven o'clock? Okay, I, oh yeah, sure. I will. I'll, I'll if for a specific purpose, I will jump on Blab, but I. I want to. I'm, I really want. I really think. Okay, I'm putting in my email address. Okay. In the okay. comments. All you have to do is coordinate with me. So we yeah, put your email address in there. And, and you send. And you send, rank order, three, of times that are convenient for you. Dates, time, and day. I also love to. Be sure the day is in there, so I have to scramble around, figure out whether it's a Friday or whenever it is. And all you do is send me an email with the rank order to when you want to talk, and I'll I'll be available on Skype for that period of time. Thank you, sir, very much. Uh, and uh, Robert, if you want to if you want to talk, uh, I I will. I'm trying not to use Lab at all. So. <laughs> Okay, good. Put your information in there. I'll contact you at six o'clock tonight, and we can talk. Okay, hold on a second. I'll me just put your information in in the chat and I'll and I'll call you at six. Well just email me. That's the best way to get in touch with me. I'll do that. All right, just thank you, sir. I didn't I didn't mean to blab Jack yet. Just thank you for your time. No, yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Okay, Stephen Whiteley, word. Other Stephen, we got you're you're the protege. <laughs> oh that yeah, I've been promoted on the spot, which is pretty uh, good. One time one time I was Going so for let, me an you, let me get you back on track because you were really good about promoting 
uh, Stephen L. Whiteley. So you understand the implement implementing what we know and building better habits at, as we move ahead. You know, better habits. We weren't we weren't taught to build better habits. I gotta tell you, I for the past twenty four years I've worked with not an advertisement, but just so you have a little thing for professional men and women who want to make more money where they're working now, and professional men and women who want to earn more money working from someone else or for themselves. After they got employed, for me to effectively encourage them to invest in themselves, and that's what you're talking about, that to me was the mountain. I didn't, I didn't find jobs for people. I trained them in the process of finding a job and do it so well they can train others. Hmm. I went near the end of, of that 24 years, about two years ago, I shut, I shut that down because they pay me monthly. And it was hard to get them to stop because said, what if I lose my job, then you're not around. I said, you can still talk to me, but you no longer have the right to call me after 9 a.m. until about 7 a.m. Because wow. people would call at 2 o'clock in the morning. They said, I've been up all night or for night, 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 a lot of nights because I've just lost my job. So I said, you waited all this time, and now you pick 2, 2 a.m., wake up my wife. I'm fine about it, but it was just two of us in the house. It's so, pretty hard. To, so know. what was the difference in that 20 years that you, were, that you coached? What did you find out that – was the most motivating thing. Was it the knowledge, book knowledge, or was it the intuitive knowledge that you were able to imply on them that would, would lead them out of the prison that they are in to the promised land? What was that, what was that solution for them? Wow, that's, that's a huge question. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fall back on, and I'll try to keep this more concise than I characteristically don't is that my coach taught me five elements. I'll start with a C. Connect, clarify, collaborate, cheerlead. Cheerlead. And commit. commit. I emphasized cheerlead. My, I would have people call and say, I'm calling because my wife says I'm, I'm a grouch. And when you talk to Steve Shannon, you come back into the room, you're no longer a grouch. So That's my able, answer. You are able to bring that awareness to your, uh, to, uh, to your client that made them realize that There's they hope. could choose to be happy. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And the cheerleading is a big part of it. I am now trying to train people. I say try. I'm in the process of training others to take over my, my practice, free of mm -hmm. charge. They can have all my list of people and so on and so forth because I know they're all employed and they say, well, I'll talk to you later. You know, when I'm, when I'm having a crisis, I'll be glad to talk to you. I mean, even though I, I was successful then getting off the dime and most of them uh, are still employed. So, I mean, we did together something right, but I don't find people. I don't find jobs for people. I don't find things for people to smile about. It's simply, it's, it's within them, as Stephen has said, and my job was to draw it out of them and display. Okay, you know what I'm talking about. They're just- Right, take, right, we display what it's like for them. Yeah, yeah. I gotta display it, let's see this. So I display it, whatever it is, you know, here it is, and say, does this look, based upon my training, background, and experience, does this seem to fall into something you could embrace? Oh, yeah, yeah. But keep in mind, their narrow focus, their narrow focus is if I don't have a resume, I die in the morning. So I have to get them past that. And the way to get past that, I put resume in my email address. Resume Steve. Oh, God. He writes resumes. No. He sells resumes. No. But I, I, I train them in and collaborate with them and clarify with them and cheerlead with them and get them to commit to them writing the resume because we had one situation many years ago, this is a true story, where somebody hired a resume writer, took the resume and set it out, began to get interviews, 
went to the first interview, and the person says, I see here uh, that you're uh, president of the uh, Indoor Bird Watchers Association, and in fact, you were the founder of that group. Is that in there in that resume? I don't remember that. He never read his own resume. You see, people want, in, in this country at least, I don't know about all the countries, but in the United States, they want it handed to them. Here's your resume. Godspeed. And by the way, don't think of any alternatives to a resume. I mean, there are many that nobody seems to give a darn about. But and again, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying the picture was to open up their minds that resumes don't get jobs. They barely will get you an interview. And why should you submit a resume to somebody generic when you don't even know what the problems are to the employer? So that was my, that was my message. And it was very very difficult. So how would you prepare them to walk in for an interview? Uh, I go along with a, a fellow that works as a career guy for LinkedIn. I've met him recently. He must be in his late 60s by now. And I'm having trouble bringing up his name, but it'll come to me in a minute. Six hours of preparation for each interview. If they did three, I was ecstatic. Their, me their preparation for the interview is mountainous. And most people say, six hours, are you kidding? I said, okay, you're maxed out on your credit card. You haven't had a job for six to 12 to 18 months. And you're complaining to me about, you know, and I said, yeah, you're right, okay. I mean, I had, I had a guy call up who, who was gonna leave Motorola, I, I won't say his name, because <laughs> He got sidetracked, all right? So he, he, I said that your first job is to find out ways to keep him, because he got derailed, keep the job you got. And he says, I got derailed, they don't like me, and I'm a Spanish, I'm a Latino, and this and that. And I said, uh, you can tell me all the excuses in the world, but in order for you to work with me, you're going to have to reapply for your job at Motorola, so you have time to find another job. Otherwise, you're gonna you're gonna dehire yourself with that attitude. Fast forward, he called me one day. He says, "I need to meet meet with you at Panera Bread," which we had met there the first time we met. And I usually don't meet with people in person, but I agreed to this. He said, "I said why?" He said, "I need you to inspire me." And I said, "Nope. Inspire yourself. I'm not going to Panera. I'm not going anywhere. And I'm probably not going to continue this phone call." And he went, he said, "You're right." I said, "Of course, I'm right." So what, what would be the what would be the the tip? Why were you taking that stance rather than the stance of of uh, them being the sister? That would say again. Why when, would you if somebody sister? comes on, if there's a problem with the audio, go ahead. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, the audio was rough. So yeah, say, I, say it again. I, okay, I would. I'm saying. Why weren't you at that time the cheerleader instead of you were it almost sounded like you were putting him down, not the cheerleader? I had a history of with him. Ah. And and he he went into he got kept the job. Did the work. I said fast forward, you remember? Yep. And yep. so he's suddenly calling me up and saying he, he needs some external person to inspire him. I don't see the word inspire in in cheerleading. I don't see that. I don't think it's related. So I, I wouldn't back off of that. And I think your your point is astute as hell. I think a really fantastic. Uh, but my I already went through that routine with him, and he knew better. And when I said no, and it took it's tough to say no. Tell me it's not easy to say no. And I said no. Mm -hmm. And what did he say? You're absolutely right. I said. To, for me to be an ex, uh, external engine starter is not what I do. But I do connect, clarify, collaborate, cheerlead, and commit, thanks to the training that I've received. But see, if anybody says to me, respectfully, and people listen, I know we're worldwide here. Somebody says to me, Steve, I'm an inspirational speaker. Okay, 
that sounds like you're going to give me respectfully to somebody who prepares and I my wife does stir fry or Chinese food uh, and pretty much when it's over you want some more I have to really discipline myself it's something about Chinese food it's lovely but it's not that satisfying is it mm -hmm. so the same thing with an inspirational speaker once you leave the room the inspiration is dying faster uh, than a cheap rose cut rose the pedals are coming off you're into your car somebody tries to cut you off it's over so yeah. my, my attitude is that we've got to be careful how we use the word inspire especially if somebody said well you inspire others I said no I don't inspire others I advocate for them I'm their advocate you know, it's like agape love. Are you familiar with that term? Yep. Okay. Non-judgmental love, right? Yep. That's what I sell. Absolutely. Not weird love, but agape love. Sounds cool. And the greatest term I learned from somebody, and she's now, unfortunately, not with us anymore, but she's in a, they so call a better place. I have no idea if it's better or not, but I do know that she's not hurting anymore. And she used the term sloppy agape. I said, sloppy agape. yeah, I would say, well, how are things going today? She says, sloppy agape. She says, I'm on the, on the, on the edge. She's a, she had her own, she's a volunteer, but had her own office at the church where I used to go. And mm -hmm. she, she was saying, I still love them, but they're testing my patience. <laughs> <laughs> and so, true. so, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, you know, and it, it, uh, I think your point is is well taken. And I hope I answered it uh, in a plausible, yeah, yeah, plausible yeah, way. Yeah, you're awesome. We're, we would like to, if um, Stephen, you want to just try the, uh, the other Stephen, Stephen L. Whiteley, if you would just jump off and try to pump on again and see if uh, we can get you on here. Well, he must have some localized uh, challenges. It, he must have. Does he have more than one place he lives? Uh, does he move around a bit, or is this the same locale? Well, no, he's in a different. He's in the. He's in Canada, and where I'm in the United States. Yeah, but I mean, is he in the country of Can in, in the countryside or in a city? Where is well, he? The he's in the he's in the capital of of uh, Canada, Ottawa. Yeah, that's a that's a that. There's so many great things about Canada. One of the marvelous things for me is uh, spending a, a rich amount of time twice as a kid in Nova Scotia. Wow. I that, mean, wow. it is. Try it on your, um, uh, Stephen, uh, try to get on your with your cell phone maybe if you're trying to. Yeah, if that's maybe a good idea. Phone. Yeah, you could probably do it with his cell phone or his, he's got two different devices there, maybe his uh, computer or cell phone. But, uh, well, great to have you guys join us over here. We're, There's Herbie. Uh, Herbie has checked in. There we go. Welcome aboard. We're getting a few more here, Stephen L. Whiteley. So if you would, <laughs> I, I really like the, 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 uh, the theme, you're right, the title of today. And he, we, we were talking about this, Stephen L. Whiteley was when we beforehand, and the, the differences of how we perceive book knowledge, and we don't really use that book knowledge in when we're out creating a career for ourselves. We're using intuitive knowledge and a lot more of that on the, uh, you know, than we do actual book knowledge. Is that accurate with you? As many years as you've been here, I mean, we yeah. use intuitive knowledge. Are you using your book knowledge when you went back to school and in, in in college or whatever? Are you using that today? No. No, I I use person knowledge. Is is the delivery of the information, including the author? I mean, if if there's any way to, by the way, it's so easy to interact with authors because most of, many of them, of course, even men and women. They're pleased if you call up their place and say, which I've done, I love your book. All you do is sit back and listen. 
I love your book. I love your article. I called an attorney one time. Hey, you, you look a lot like somebody hey! we know. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe this, Stephen? What, what a great record! You're now a tech. Hit the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we got here. Now, if you'll try to repair the damage that I caused, so everything else is fine. But uh, <laughs> well, well done. Yeah. Uh, and that you did. You switched to your cell phone, and here you are. That's from, exactly right. So I, I, re eh, eh, I rebooted Canadians, my Canadians, eh, 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 and on my cell it's phone. It's marvelous. So I was listening the whole time. I could see and hear you guys. I could see your notes. We ignored you the best way we could. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah, we were fairly consistent in ignoring you. And I'm even though you had some good text here, he says, Ah, ah. It says, do not pass go, do not collect $200. I don't remember what that was about. Uh, I don't know Please about that. be patient with me. I'm teasing you. I really can get on with my cell phone, but I don't, I'm not admitting that. I mean, it was most interesting. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, but down here you said, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I was really... <laughs> And one final comment, you said, my whole family is sick about what's happened today. Oh, so those, yeah. Yeah, That's those, exactly right. yeah, right? Ah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And, um, and, well, thanks. I, and I was using my B material. I, mean, I didn't want to use the A material right away <laughs> to fill in for you because, <laughs> you know, what could happen? I mean, things could happen that, you know. But you guys have have done and are doing not have no it's not past tense it's like it's like the last issue of better homes and gardens no we never said last issue. <laughs> the previous blab and i'm so glad to see you live and then and basically in person live yeah. from greater downtown ottawa here is stephen Miley. <laughs> welcome you know what's missing from blabs Good to see you guys. <laughs> theme music. You gotta have your own theme music. You know, I I thought she was a local, but she was a fast express. Something of that. <laughs> we gotta come up with some theme music. We, we I think we need, you know, pa 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 Happiness works. <laughs> when, I, when I was in the broadcasting business, Canada, Canadian stations right on the border with Detroit, yeah, and elsewhere, were not allowed to have more than about twenty percent American originated music. All the rest of it had to be Canadian. Right. Yeah, we have this uh, rule, this law called the uh, Can Content. Yeah. So it has to be, they have to uh, put in a certain amount of Canadian content and everything. I think it's smart. I, uh, my son wants to move to Canada. Uh, he just, he is in Los Angeles, but he's, he's still there, but he loves Canada. And I've had the privilege of traveling on Eastern. Hmm? <laughs> Excuse me? You're telling me he's welcome here. <laughs> oh, I know, I know that. And some some of the people you welcome are not so welcome here. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> your uh, your immigration immigration policy seems to be working. Just a quick story: When I was in Montana for for summers, yeah. Glacier Park, yeah. we would go and picnic in the swath between the trees that was the border of Canada. No oh. fences, nothing. You just come and go and. There was very few people around, but there was picnic tables up there, and you have to put away the trash, pack in and pack out. <laughs> we, and, we, don't, we don't guard uh, the border there because there's really nothing on the other side either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, I got it out in time. Oh, it's bleeding now. I said put it back in. But oh, yeah. <laughs> absolutely, but. Think of this, all this business about building fences in Mexico, and that's like the little Dutch boy with a finger in the dike. 
Canada, no one comments about the fact that it's a, it's a wide swath. I'd say it's a football field or more or soccer field or, I, or it must be like Canadian football field because you have a longer football field than we do. And by the way, the Grey Cup winner is a good friend of mine. I think he's deceased now, Marv Levy, won the Grey Cup many times in Canada and then later migrated to uh, the United States and ended up as the general manager of football for the Buffalo Bills. He's no longer there now. Phi Beta Kappa, terrific coach, my favorite coach of all time. He was terrific. But, um, you know, you know, we're so isolated here in the United States. We talk about, we know about the Kardashian, Kardashians, I've always pronounced that wrong, Kardashians and what they're doing and so on. But we do not know what's going on in Canada uh, with the football. Because you start, you start your, your season ahead of us because, of course, it becomes frozen tundra on December. <laughs> first yeah yeah yeah. right yeah True. and you have three downs only I, I do our final in the snowstorms <laughs> yeah which is which is fine i think that's what football used to be all about do you have any um football fields that are uh undercover that they have a dome or something uh, no i don't think so trick question <laughs> I don't think so either. I don't think so. Football, or baseball, maybe, but um, not uh, football. And the the Blue Jays, I think, it's in Toronto. Baseball doing great. Yeah, like that, uh, right? They won the doubleheader on the weekend. <laughs> I didn't even know that, but I knew they were doing darn well. And of course, that's that to me would be great. I don't think I could be wrong. That I don't know the history. There has been. World Series games. The Blue Jays have won the World Series twice. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So I think they're on their way to get back into the World Series, as they should. But you know what? I, I Canada I could go on and on, but Toronto has more. I'm told. I'm a foodie. So I got my apron on here. Let me show you. China don't... China dumpling. <laughs> you know, the food wasn't good, but the, the aprons were fabulous. So I bought an apron with one. Never went back. But uh, why do you wear a, a, an apron at your computer? Does it spit on you? <laughs> yeah, but please don't tell more than a thousand of your best friends that are watching. Okay. <laughs> Toronto has more different ethnic food restaurants than any other city in the world. Wow. It sure is ethnic. There's no doubt about that. Anything you can think of. And iterations and contusions. That's not the right word, but you know what I'm talking about. The offs, you know, spin-offs from that. And, <laughs> and Toronto is the only place left in the at least that I know about, certainly in the North America, where the the doorman Wears uh, umlauts or whatever you said, these gorgeous displays. They look like uh, commanders or admirals or generals or whatever, right? Foot guards, eh? <laughs> they are divine to the nines, as they say in the, in the hood. <laughs> but enough about Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stephen Sher, tell me a little bit about your childhood. Childhood? Which, which Stephen? That other achievement, I hope. Yeah, you, 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 you're Steve. Oh, yeah. and the great news is that I was born with a lot of different diseases and got it over with early, and now it has gone to my brain. <laughs> <laughs> Club foot, polio, a triple pneumonia, eczema, uh, the heartbreak of psoriasis. Uh, so did you learn to laugh? I, I, yeah, I was the laughing stock of, uh, <laughs> of, of Boston and Great, Neck, and Great Neck, New York. I was a Great Necker, by the way, oh, wow. for many years, a Great Necker. And you could say that legitimately. Yes. <laughs> uh, today, I've got pristine blood reports, if they're true. I mean... Today, in today's world, we're dealing with doctors. I mean, 
I'm even on the board of directors of an accountable care organization, which probably is not familiar with you, but it's turning around and preserving general practitioner doctors practices that are dying. You know, oh, wow. so that means you're going to bring some laughter to them. Oh, I always do. <laughs> <laughs> They're threatening to pay me to be on the board now because well, that's a good thing because you'll bring some laughter. That hat, the glasses, the headset, you're made. Yeah. Uh, you know, all the way. <laughs> here's, the, here's the deal on praise. I'll just let you go another thirty minutes only. Only. <laughs> Ah, ah. Keep it, keep it to about thirty minutes. No, I. But that's the deal: is to lift up other people, which Thanks. you do daily. You do daily, whether you're on a blab or not. Yeah. But I'm, but I'm so pleased that you as a, been a great techie to get Stephen back on the air by simply saying, "Try a new device. Try a new device. <laughs> Try a new device. <laughs> osmosis, osmosis, and the cell phone. A cell phone." <laughs> It's like these automated uh, airline airliners that they That's are building right. today. Yeah. Pilot guess this is Pilot Shannon. The plane <laughs> you're in today is foolproof. Foolproof. <laughs> foolproof. <laughs> foolproof. <laughs> Nothing will happen. No, no. Yeah. yeah. That's my problem. Nothing will happen. <laughs> <laughs> So how did did we get Stephen one? I'm Stephen three, by the way. Is it get or four? That gives some room for improvement down below. <laughs> Stephen one, what happiness? What we never were taught. I'm adding some words. We're never taught in school. I know you've you've presented some uh, text here, and by the way, I gotta get, oh, I have to move back into and well, try. Dry the dishes in the kitchen really soon, <laughs> as my wife will be here in less than an hour. Okay. And then she won't listen to me why I was late. Go ahead. The most important thing that we were actually not just not taught, but were misled on. Uh, was well said. What it means to know something. We're taught that. You take in the information, you regurgitate it on demand, and if you're good at that, you get the points, you get the reward, you get the appreciation, you go to the head of the class. Yeah. But that is a way to keep the populace in chain. Because really, knowing is not about having the information, just like you know, having a piece of fitness equipment doesn't make you fit. Um, you know, having a library card and not using it doesn't make you educated. <laughs> in the same way, Who, who's in the background laughing at that? <laughs> that's true. Yeah, and, and that's mountainous. And it's, by the way, that's it, the whole deal of Seth Godin. I know I'm trying to promote, I don't need to promote Seth. Seth's book. He gives yeah. away his books. <laughs> Seth Godin is he's you are singing his song. That's oh, what he says. He says American uh, the public education system is so flawed. Keep your head down and be like everyone else. Yeah, exactly. And that is not right. So not right. What we want is everybody to be really alive and authentic. Well, I'm strong on the alive side. The authenticity is under question. I know, I understand that, but uh, but you're right. I mean, and you know, we we need, and we we are also cinnamon. Excuse me, synonym deficient in this, at least in this country. We use two thousand words over and over and over again. And, it, and what I love about I'm my third or fourth encounter with you folks, you rarely use, if you've used it, I missed it, thank goodness. <laughs> the word, the ah. word journey. People oh, actually say to me, how was your journey to the restroom? 
I said, well, I passed many doors, including the women's room, went into the restroom, did my duty, and came back unscathed and washed my hands, of course. So I had a fabulous journey. Now, I don't normally clutch people by the neck. But I could be talked into it if they weave into their conversation the word journey three times in one sentence. We can help you resolve that issue with that troublesome word journey. We will take baby steps. Baby steps, of course, baby steps. You need to take baby steps to be awesome That's in right. developing, developing a programmatic uh, concert. That's right. <laughs> and see if anybody will salute the flag. And get the basic concept, the basic concept. These are all things that have been coming along, and then they get recycled and brought back. A friend of mine published three columns of these buzzwords. So you could take one from column A, one from column B, and run from column C at random. Yes, Daniels. Daniels. And, ma and make a sentence that has no meaning. But it sounded good. Now, well, am I alone in this? Be, uh, the synonym deficit? I mean, I think there's synonym deficit. And it can't, you know, I, here's, here's, a, here's a person who is not synonym def deficient. When I walked in to get my semi-annual uh, chest x-ray, she greeted me. She says, my name is Nicole. Would you like to mosey with me down to the x-ray machine room i said nicole on the basis of the word mosey i will mosey anywhere you want me to because i don't get to mosey very often that made my day and you know it made the day so on as well as the two people in front and the and, and jim who did the the appointments my hmm. hand rocked you don't hand write anymore you hand i hand wrote a thank you note that didn't start with the words thank you, by the way, to their boss. I said, I want, <laughs> I want your boss. And they said, here it is. <laughs> From Bethesda Health City in South Florida. Wow. <laughs> when was, gentlemen, because I've got to go, you know, do my duties here. When was the last time you received a handwritten note? Not a greeting card. My father was in that business. A handwritten note that thanked you for the least, when you least expected it. Hey, Austin, come on out. And when was the last time you sent a handwritten note? I, it took me uh, a month to get bricks and mortar addresses of some of my dear friends where I'm a recovering Google Plus video hangout person. <laughs> and, to get, and to get their bricks and mortar address so I could send them thank you notes and a Thanksgiving Day card. Now, in Canada, I'm not sure when Thanksgiving right. occurs. Hey, huh? Austin, well, I'd like you to step out and have a, give us a question. In October. Okay, thank you. Send a Thanksgiving Day card or whatever at the name of that event is in October. You get. They will say it happens to be called Thanksgiving. They will be blown away, but in the United States, at forty-nine cents now per card. So I hesitant to send any new cards out because then people say I got a card from Shannon. Now I got to send him one. <laughs> <laughs> Please to know, Stephen. Thank you for listening. He written three or four handwritten uh, notes of appreciation since the last uh, six months. Try one a week. I appreciate I appreciate the guys that come by and have a if Austin jump on with us here. I would love to have a conversation. You have to have one question for us. I hand out water to our, I thought you were going to say, when they have trash pickup and recycling, I make sure they each get an unopened, fresh bottle of spring water. 
And you know what they do without even a conversation about it? They bring the containers up to the garage door every time. I don't think you guys get much appreciation. <laughs> and and women, women especially don't get happiness and what we weren't taught in school. Yeah, Gretchen Rubin, look up her name. She talks about gratefulness and I learned a lot from her. You're familiar with her? Well, Gretchen Rubin is incredible. But try to get one thank you note out for the least little nicety that you've experienced the previous week. And it, it changes the whole landscape of the universe, the divine, whatever you want to call it, by sending out thank you notes. And I have a book about that from uh, Shepard is the, is the uh, author. I'm having trouble recovering her name. But she says, the art of the handwritten letter or note. Oh. It, cha it changes the world, world. And she says that a handwritten thank you note is a gift. It is not a letter. With that, I'm going to go dry the pots and pans or whatever is wet and get ready for my wife's return so she has the kitchen open for her magic, her cooking. <laughs> Thank great you so much. Austin, come on now. Adios, Mr. Stephen Shannon. We miss you. <laughs> we appreciate you. <laughs> <Not coming. laughs> hey, <Wow>. Austin. <laughs> Reading from London. London. <laughs> Reading from London, yes. yes. How did you find us? <laughs> well, you're on a blab, isn't it? I just came through a blab. Oh, ready for my stream. <laughs> yeah. what, are you, what, are you, what are you guys talking about? Uh, we're talking about happiness and uh, how uh, they don't uh, teach us the right things in school and it detracts from our happiness. How do you, how do you achieve a happiness, you mean? Yeah. You, you achieve happiness. <laughs> uh, how to achieve happiness, right? The key to happiness. Is that yes. what I'm trying to say? The key to happiness is harmony. Okay, you you want my version, my my London version? Yes, <laughs> I want your London version. All right. The key to happiness, in my opinion, is is what? With three things, you want to inside yourself, harmony with your environment. Okay. Harmony with your living. Well, okay, that's cool. Uh, let me tell you my version, Dan. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. We are all seeking for happiness, whether we want it or like it or not, as a human being. Yeah. And for centuries, we have been seeking for happiness, right or wrong? Right? Yes, so yes. The key to happiness is the first platform is stability. When you have a stable house, a stable family, a stable relationship, then you you are stable. When you come home, your wife look after you, your children love you. You have a, you come home in the right time, and every time you come home, you're welcome, right? When you go to work, when you go to work, you feel cool. You know that you're going to get a job. You know that tomorrow you know, you're not going to lose your job. You know your boss gonna give you a give you a good bollocking when you go there. You know your your your, your, your friends are not going to your workmates are not going to mess you around. So you don't work in a toxic environment. So you're stable. So when you have stable, when you achieve stability in your life, then the next platform will be joy. The people around you will give you joy. The children, your family, your workmate, because they. They are around you, and they give you a good environment, and that is the next platform. You get joy. When you when you have joy, happiness will comes along spontaneously to you. So it's like a flower, nice sunshine, nice water, enough water, nice sand, nice ground, nice, and the flowers start to bloom. When the flower bloom, a nice aroma come out, and your heart start to be happy. So when your heart starts to be happy, it blooms and you become compassion, my friend. And that's the key to happiness, the London way. 
Nice. I like that, what you're talking about. I think it's really great. And uh, <laughs> with anything you have to Pardon? It would be this. I cheat. I, I teach mindfulness anyway. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> I have well, the no. platform, everyone is seeking for happiness. Everyone is seeking for for everything right in life but the first thing find a platform where, where you are stable in your life because now we are moving along all the time we're moving from a to b b to c d every minute we're changing wife changing girlfriend changing boyfriend changing job changing thing because we want to have a journey of of many experience right and every time we have, we have an experience it's not for us so you need to find a stable environment for yourself so that you can uh, chase your dream and just follow that dream. And then if you follow that dream, without falling everywhere, because as a human, no doubt we have one life, we have one life, but if we achieve our dream, that one dream, we, are, we can see all dreams are the same. That's your happiness, isn't it? Do you think all dreams are the same? Each, in the, each an individual have their own desire. Yes. You have your own desire. Robert has his own desire. I have my own desire. And you have your own dreams. I can't chase your dream. You can't chase my dream. That's why we're trying to chase each other's dreams. Find your dreams. Find your desire. The grass is always greener on the other side. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so London is, is greener than, than where you come from, uh, Stephen. <laughs> it's raining all bloody day here. It's raining all day here. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <We have> a... <laughs> so that's, a, that's, that's to me the key to happiness. If you have stability, you go home knowing that your wife is not going to run away, <laughs> not going to beat you up. Your children are not going to shout at you. <laughs> now, you know that you go home, you're so welcome home. You love to go home, and that's stable. When you go to work, your, your, your colleague welcome you. You know, you make a mistake, your colleague says, it's okay, my friend. Your boss says, my friend, it's all right, you know. You know, but <laughs> when you go back in a toxic environment or a toxic family environment, then happiness will never be. There will be the opposite of stress, anxiety, phobia, misery, sadness. That will be your opposite. It's part of a human being. Yeah, is... what do you think meaning I can't hear you. Has. Yeah, we can't hear you, Stephen. Stephen, we can't hear you. So if you're content with yourself and you just aim for one dream, that's more than enough for all the dreams in your life. Isn't it? And then if you achieve your dream, everything is there. All right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So my yeah. dream is right. a happy dream. Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that, is that... Sandy, come on out and join us. Is that acceptable for you guys? Yes. The British way? Well. <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> Well, that's actually that's 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 lousy. lousy. Hmm? Uh, you call it stability, I call it harmony. I don't think that's very different. Uh, harmony, harmony is. I mean, that's my version. Can I say harmony is is to find what what you can be a help, or you can be with family, with your relationship with people. For example, how many for first within yourself is to find the body and mind connection. Yes. So through mindfulness, to breathing exercises, you see, you, 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 you calm your body and mind. Just for example, you go and chase your dream. You go and do your desire. You go and chase all the women. You go and chase all the money. You all this take energy. All this take time. And all it takes sacrifice, right or wrong, right? And therefore, you're giving away all of energy. So you come back one day, every evening come back, sit down on your own, be yourself, and do your breathing, 
and connect your body and mind and give the body and mind a chance to rest and bring back all this spent energy. Therefore, be, therefore, you become less stressed, be more calm, and less, uh, you know, aggravated, whatever. So that's harmony within yourself. Yeah. But if you, understand, if you understand harmony within yourself first, then you would look on to the outside, harmony with your relationship, with your friends, with your relationship, with your spirit children, with everything. And if you understand that harmony, then the harmony will go with a bigger thing like nature and, you know, all this, you know, the, uh, nature and animals. And, but, and if you cannot first, if you can, if you find harmony within yourself, the key to it is your breath. Because the key to our existence is not your dream, it's not your, your desire, it's not how much uh, your food that you eat, it's not your healthy food, it's not your all this amazing exercise, it's not all your science and technology, it's the air that keeps you alive. We have forgotten that. So if you understand through, through deep breathing and you feel that it touches your heart, if you put your right hand, touches your heart, touches your body, then you realize, oh my God, it's not all this, this is important to, to, to have all this material thing, but what keeps us alive? Not all these things, it's the air. So therefore I find harmony within myself, but I understand that it's the air that keeps me alive. I need to take care of the air. So I find harmony with myself, then I understand nature, then I understand harmony within the relationship and everything. So the key to harmony is just find the harmony within yourself first through breathing. It's very simple. Uh, we always believe that you have to be a Dalai Lama or you have to be a great holy man, you have to be Jesus, you have to be whatever to be such amazing people. But you are as amazing as anybody else. You can even do your breathing like everybody else. All these people are just human beings like us. They come and go like us. But if only thing that we we want to enjoy our life, want to make money, want to struggle, want to fight, want to uh, want to we have a different set mind of life. But we enjoy that journey. But once in a while we just sit down and relax ourselves. Why these people, no doubt we don't say they they are they are different from us. They choose that life. For me, if, for example, I go into the temple and smile every day, and after one week or two, three, I'll be, I find it so boring. The so life for me is, uh, has to be a challenge. And that is when I finish my challenge, when I give up my energy, I will come back and just do my breathing and, and connect myself with nature. And that's it. Does that, does that okay with you, Robert? It is. It is. Yeah, you like yeah. that? It's powerful. Am I? <laughs> you make a great sense. Uh, and I like your take. <laughs> what's, that, what's the, Austin, what's that board behind you? Boy, there's nobody behind. The writing. The writing. Yeah, it's about uh, different. One of the guys who live here, he was a technology guy. So he's writing on this thing. Yeah, yeah. So. This well, you're familiar with that, but that is very powerful what you said. You think so? Thank you. Yeah, I mean a lot, a lot of people have given us many advice on happiness and relationship and everything. Be yourself. Have to find it yourself. If you, to me, I think it's like help. It's like help. Is it? Someone comes to you. Oh, Robert, what's wrong with you? Oh, I'm not feeling very well. Okay, Robert. Go and take some vitamin B. Then and they go, no, Robert, no, 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 no vitamin. Take vitamin A. And they go, no, no, Robert, do running. It's better than vitamin A. So there's so many things given to you. But I took, I took vitamin A. I felt great. But it's just you, but not Robert, right? That's so right. I would say, look, I would say, Robert, what's wrong with you? Oh, I'm very dizzy. And I said, what have you been doing? Oh, I've been driving. Or I said, listen, my friend, you've been walking around sit down, relax, have a cup of tea, and do some breathing, and then, you know, calm yourself down. That's it, right? So this is because I don't give you a solution if I don't understand what is the cause. In every problem, 
I always look for the cause. What causes that anxiety? What causes that that depression? What causes that anger? Why? What causes that anger? Is mm-hmm. that just say, oh, well, come on, you you have you you're depressed. Oh, just have a smile. You can't do that. Is it, you know what I mean? You just say, okay, what's the problem? Do you have a problem at work, or do you happen, or you come home and your wife start to cry, or your girlfriend? You don't say, oh, what's the problem? No, you know what is the problem? And they say, oh, I just get angry. Da 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 da. And what what causes the kid to behave like that? Maybe in school they have a problem. So we don't look deeper than that. We just go straight to the point and start screaming at each other. So that is our <laughs> our problem, right? Yeah. Right, wrong. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So when we walk in, when we walk into the office and our boss starts shouting at us, and we we just go crazy. What the hell are you shouting at me for, right? You know, I done nothing wrong. Mm-hmm. You, 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 it's, it's hard to lose my friend, my boss. Sit down. You're the boss. We love you. You pay me. We have to listen. But sit down. What is the problem? Okay, the problem there. Okay, what is the cause? Find out the cause. And then you find the cause. Then you solve the problem. Then that's, that's what human being is all about. We're here to solve that the bloody problem. And if it's, if there's no problem, no cause or problem, no 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 journey. If the journey is just in a flat line, then it's boring. That's why our heartbeat goes dee, dee, dee. as long as you stay within the line, you know. That's okay. Don't go over the line. Then try to come back. You see? So I don't want. Find... Stephen, go on. I don't want perfection because, like you said, it's so boring when everything is perfect. My friend, we want to be perfection. That's what problem with us. We look at a girl. Wow, she's so gorgeous. She's so gorgeous. Nice body, everything. But you know, she's a bit, uh, a bit of a, you know. Oh, look at a man. Oh, he's so handsome, but, you know, he's a bit of... There's always a but there in every human being, right? Yeah, yeah. So because we, 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 that is why we fail. We, look at, we are not perfect. We have, we have all this bad thing in our body. We don't want to say, oh, he's tall, you're short, and you get upset. What do you mean I'm short? My friend, I'm, you know, I'm only half an inch shorter than him, right? We, we get upset when you hear about negativity, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm short, but you are tall, you play basketball, you're cool, but I'm sure I play ping pong, you know? Come and tell me ping pong, I kick the shit out of you, right? So ah, each, ah, each ah. human being have their own uh, own uh, use to the world, right? Isn't yeah. their own fruit to the world. So, so we are taught through the movies and Hollywood and all that. We taught our girl, a young, you know, you find your prince on a white horse and go, and this is not realistic, right? So we need to mm-hmm. re-educate our people in a different way so that they can find the real happiness. So that way we are not looking for the reality of happiness. It's, it's unachievable. We humans have anxiety, depression, worry, anger, ego, cocky, it's all in our emotion. It's part of us. We cannot. It's, but through I, I breathing. Have... Pardon? Go but there. I have a caveat to, to add but, to that. Yeah, we have all. But we have also the goodness in our body, right? Yes. So through, yes. through breathing, through breathing, to calm your body and mind, we can just bring this down. See? For example, if you, if, if you take your kid along the road and suddenly he just pull away and run across the road, you will chase after him. There's anxiety, there's fear. Oh shit, you know, my kid, my car, my runner. You, you caught all the, you, you caught your son back. And you know, if you understand that, you start with, listen, son, calm down. You shouldn't do that. It's not very nice. No? But because your anxiety went, oh, up there, you start screaming and shouting and screaming at the kid, and even when physical, you see, you went up there, you see? Right? Yeah. So, you, so therefore, the kid said, what the hell are you shouting at me? I did nothing wrong. I just run it because the kid, they don't understand, right? It's not that for. Doing this, Steve. He's, not, they, he, he, he's a kid. He don't understand all this thing, right? So we mm-hmm. need to tell him, look, my, we need to speak to him in the, in the sense that, in a very uh, mindful way. Then he understands, look, this is not very good. You have, you can't, you hold on to daddy or hold on to mommy. But if you start to shout and scream at him, the next time he look at you in a different way. So this is why we, 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 we are many things that we just jump to conclusion. So the, our anxiety went up and then we will go back, we become paranoid. We squeeze the kid's hand so much that we don't let him go, right? 
So therefore, we need to find a way to re learn to control this, not control, this, put this little, at the, at the bottom of our heart. And when it goes over the scale, we take a, sit down, take our breathing, and come back. And that's it. That's the key to, to release all your anxiety, fear, and our depression. And the key to it is breathe into your nose, and breathe out your nose. Just put, out your, put your right hand on the heart and breathe in and breathe out every day. Do it 60 times, six, 60 seconds. And that's all you do. And that's it. You don't need to be a Dalai Lama. You don't need to go to live to this village. You <laughs> have to go because you live in you live in you all, you all live in a paradise in in the foot of land of opportunity. You right, but you want to you go to Africa and see all these things and all these things because you that's a short holiday. But these people come from hell. They're coming here. <laughs> You don't want to go. And, uh, you're not. You're not gonna uh, uh, walk five miles every day to carry a bucket of water and come back. You, you can't do that. But you're a robber. You're the first one who die. <laughs> I've been the second one to die. So we yeah. we all want the hell because we live in heaven. That's all. That's human being. But if there's no hell, there's no heaven. That is part of life. There's, there's no. There's That's no right. champion. There won't be a second. That's part of life. It's like 100 yeah. meters, Did the well. first, second, and third, if I look at them, it's all the same. It's only the machine that tells the difference, right? Zero, 9.9 second, 9.98 zone, zero, zero, but like, you, you can't even see anything. So between winning and losing, to me, there's no difference. But how you how you do it, deal with life, that's it. Through breathing. <laughs> yeah. so I, hope you, I hope you enjoyed that, Robert. I did a lot. I did. Thank you so much. So put put your right hand in the heart and just breathe sixty times every day into your nose and out yeah. your nose for sixty seconds, and and give it time. You will find your you will find your happiness. Well, you know what, Austin, that is really awesome to. Uh, I mean, that was a really great tip. I mean, the people that you know, were jumping on and off were hearing you. It was really awesome to have that. You know, it, it was a great expression, too. So thank you. No, don't put pressure on yourself. It's part of us being naughty. It's, an, it's nice to be naughty sometimes, right? It's part of us. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, obviously, we, we don't we don't say breaking the law. I mean, you, you know, you, you, you enjoy your life. You drink, you know, eat a little bit. Everything is learned in a balance. And... What is life? Balance. Yeah. What is life? Why are you? Why are you? Why no, are you so, that's it. Learning the balance. Yeah. Why are you so crazy? I don't do this. I don't eat this. I don't need it. Da, 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 da. Enjoy everything on earth. Yes. Enjoy. Yes. But in a balanced way. I mean, you, 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 you know why? You know how to balance yourself. You know that if everything is excessive, you know that you're gonna pay a price, right? You work too much if you don't rest. You know you're gonna pay a price. If you sleep too much, you still pay a price. So you you, you gotta find that balance. It's very simple. Is it? So when 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 both of them meet together, yin and yang meet together, there's a line in the middle. You know, yin and yang, the black and the white, when they meet together, the balance of the day and night meet together. In the middle, there's a line there. When they connect in the middle, all you have to do is just open that open the door and walk in there, and you can see a brand new world, my friend. That's a word that will make you more happier. You see? Well, finding the balances in your life that you want more of and what you'd like more to be more of the things that you really like. And it's really sometimes you have to one walk through the fire to get to the other side. Yes, you have to do what you gotta do. But you need to come back and sit down and do your breathing and bring back all your span energy, bring back all your <laughs> Or the, you know, as I said, there's no success without sacrifice. All right? There's no wow. action. No success. With, I, I, think, I think what we interpret sacrifice is sometimes we don't need struggle and sacrifice in our, in our daily lives. And I, under, I think we have to walk through a certain amount of understanding the balance what you said earlier that it's just there's two sides to it 
And when we are going through pressure on one side, the other side, um, we it's Give always up. easier to slide down the slope than it is yeah, to so, go. So, so you need to breathe exercise. When you feel down, mm -hmm. do your breathing, bring it up. When you went too high, do your breathing, bring it down. That's the key to it. When you feel low, I can be. I can breathe myself into highness. That's the greatest place in the world, but doesn't really bring. You don't. Um, you don't want to be in paradise forever, right? You must come we back to earth. Come down to face reality. Come back to earth. <laughs> Understand? Oh, yeah, I get you, that. Yeah. You, you don't want to be in paradise forever. You're gonna. You're gonna suffer because when you come back to reality, you're gonna suffer. <laughs> So if you understand mm -hmm. the balance, then you suffer less. You suffer, but you are, you don't suffer that much. Understand? Mm -hmm. Then things will be better. Then you can move on. Because you can put your, like you said, like the demonstration of putting your hand over your heart. And, right. Brave, yeah. and, because, and connect with the heart. 60 times. It's simply that's that that simple energy that simple that's a simple gratitude to lift you out of the situation and bring that love and that kindness back into yourselves and it's like i call i always I always say atoms up so atoms up meaning all my cells are pointing up and they're collecting the light that comes in it's just a thing i say but everyone, if it's easy to turn, if you recognize it and really believe it, when you tell your cells to turn up, you're 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 breathing light into them. That's right. So my is mindfulness in sixty seconds, right? You can do that. Just like but you said, yeah. We all can do that. We don't have to be because you believe in somebody who comes in with a white robe, shave his hair, with a white mouth, and and you love him, and you believe that person. It's like when we watch the Hollywood movie, we believe that everybody is like handsome, six pack, beautiful, <laughs> right? Who can do yeah. all this? Who can do all this amazing thing? But in fact, everyone can do that, right? So I mean, the future of Hollywood, when this black and all this coming along and all this internet coming along, future of Hollywood will not be will not that. Yeah, it won't world. be. It won't be. We work, we're going to create shows right here. That's it. There's no soul. There's no soul. There's, I, there's a reality. We are. We, yes, yes. That's We're I speak to you. I speak to you. I don't even know you, Robert, but I speak to you from my heart. I speak. I share with you what I feel. Maybe you might not accept it. Maybe you don't. Uh, you think this is hocus pocus. It doesn't matter. But I speak to you what I feel and how I share. That's it, right? Well, it's, not, it's not. It's not a Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. It's not Hollywood. It's not script. It's not anything. Nope. It's how nope. I practice my life. You know, and that's how it is. So I just say, look, I'm just a normal person. I'm yep. not a special person, but I can still achieve mindfulness by breathing 60, 60 times a day. That's it, isn't it? Well, it's a, it's a beautiful connection. Because the connection, we, we are bringing the reality to ourselves. Um, uh, we're making that responsibility to us and to bring our own happiness. You brought a lot of happiness to me today through the exercise of putting my hand on my heart and breathing through that and creating that awareness in myself that I can be in the, a, a loving state, a, 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 a connection that many people love and trust you. And also that's the most important thing that why I say put your right hand on your heart is that you feel your heart beat, you breathe the heart, the air go into the heart. And now you understand that if I push my heart too much, you're going to hurt my heart. Then you start to love your heart. Then you understand that. When you start to love your heart, you become more compassionate. You understand. And you start to love your heart, the heart becomes better. The heart wants to take care of you. And you will live longer, healthier, and happier. And that's the key. I, I don't care about all this. I'm nothing, I'm nothing against science or technology. I love science and technology and medicine. But that will never replace the feeling in your heart. And that's when I, when you when you keep on doing that every day, your heart will recognize that this man truly loves me, and it's true love. True love is not just <laughs> right. Yeah. So we do, we don't understand the word true love. 
this is true love because your heart is you. You see? Yeah. Yeah. And you, he, yeah. your heart is not stupid, and your mind is not stupid. No, so because that, they, they, right, the, the mind has nothing to do with it. The, it has to do with it, it, the soul, the soul yeah. actually speaking. Yeah, so you feel, every day you feel, oh, and then you keep sending, it's like you, you keep look, taking care of your children every day, how are you, call, how is things, you know, it's, it's just like that, simple thing. It's not a big thing, but it's, it's, it's a good feeling. Someone call you, hey, hey, how are you, dad, how are you, dad? Are you okay? Wow, you know, you call me. Oh, it's like, wow, my son just called me. Wow, you know, like all these things. But you feel, you know, you just like you lift you up and your heart just go bloom a little bit, you know, beat a little bit. So every yes. time you breathe in, your heart right. beat a little bit. So it's all this, all the money and all the medicine and all the science were not able to buy that for you. Never. No. And no. that is your happiness. And so no. simple. So simple to share with this. So simple. So the three things that you need is that I say desire. So you want to feel your heart, make your heart, love your heart. All right, <laughs> direction. So the 60 second direction and discipline. So every day when you got time to sit down, breathe into your nose and just feel the air, you know, warming your heart. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful feeling. Well, it's a, it's a it's a it's a powerful feeling because uh, it's the connection that we are. It's the connection to happiness because we can look at, if we choose that thump in our heart and recognize that when we did it, we were actually connecting to the love and happiness of feeling that. So, so you become a very mindful person. Whatever your boss say, whatever your people say about you, yeah, you care. don't give a shit. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to react. It's a waste of time, right? Yeah, it's Why waste your time. energy? Why are you wasting your energy? All right? We always, yeah, we get that. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy that. Uh, Thank you, talk. Austin. What uh, a great day. Oh, okay. See Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Thank Everybody you. Everybody on. We are here. This is Robert Allen McCray. We are talking about happiness today and uh, with Austin from Europe. What part of London? <laughs> London, there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, everybody. Bye bye. If anybody wants to jump on right now, that's good. I'm going to end this broadcast right now. Thank you very much for a wonderful day. You can see it on the repeat. I'm going to have a copy of it on here uh, for you to view later. Thanks. Love you all.